Today, we're taking a look at whether electronic gears are really worth the hype, and more importantly, whether or not they're really worth the massive price tag that they come with. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Josh and here we talk all things triathlon. Now, regular viewers of the channel may have noticed that I've been riding this very new swanky felt IA behind me and this isn't a video all about the bike, although that will definitely be coming, so make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to see my full thoughts on what my new felt IA is like. Instead, today I thought we'd talk all about my experiences and my thoughts and my first time using electronic gears. As I feel like I've got some really interesting thoughts after having my first experience with them, so let's try and figure out whether they are worth the massive price tag. We're gonna cover four main points in this video. What electronic gears are, what exactly I've got on this bike, and some of my previous history with mechanical gears, just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from, We'll talk about the pros, we'll talk about the cons, and then we'll wrap up with a bit of a conclusion and I'll give you my final thoughts on whether or not it's really worth it. For anyone who might be a little bit confused about what I mean by electronic gear shifting, simply put, instead of having a cable which connects your gear shifter at the front of your bike to the derailleur, either your front or your back derailleur, instead, we use an electronic system to do this. So either that's completely wireless, like what I've got on my bike behind me, where there's no connection between the shifters and the derailleurs, or there might be an electronic cable rather than a mechanical moving cable that goes through the bike's frame. Behind me, my new Felt IA is SRAM Red 11 speed. So it's not the brand new 12 speed. So I've got a normal Shimano chain on there, no flat sided chain. I'm still running a Shimano chain and a Shimano 11 speed cassette, funnily enough, but the derailleurs itself and the front chain stay and chain set is all SRAM red. I'm actually running the same gear ratio on this bike as I am my normal road bike. So I've got a 5339 tooth chain set on the front and an 1128 cassette on the back. It's just what works really well for me. I really like this combination mainly for flatter TTs, but it also works incredibly well for rolling. And I feel like I have enough gear range to get up anything that's pretty steep here in the UK. Previously, I'm coming from mechanical Shimano 105. However, I do have a few Ultegra parts on that bike, so it's a bit of a mismatch, but we'll call it Shimano 105, although I've kept incredibly good care of it, so it shifts incredibly well. I've never had a problem with that bike. I've always really enjoyed running mechanical just because I feel like it's really easy to fix and understand exactly how it's working. So with a bit of the background out the way, let's talk about the pros of running an electronic group set on your bike. I think the largest benefit by a significant margin is just shifting performance. Now, obviously I'm comparing a mid or upper mid range group set in Shimano Mechanical 105 to what was SRAM's flagship when they were on 11 speed. However, I think the gap between the 105 and the SRAM Red on this bike is much larger than I would expect just going up a tier. The shifting on this has been absolutely incredible in a number of ways. Simply put, the shifts always go through, they're always perfect, they always happen almost instantaneously, they always feel good. It just, the shifting is clean is the only way I can describe it compared to my previous bike, where even though I kept my Shimano 105 in great condition, sometimes the shifting just didn't feel quite as good as it could do. However, on this bike, having ridden it for a month or two now, it always shifts perfectly, and that's something that I really noticed. Furthermore, I find shifting under tension, so when there's more power going through the pedals, especially going uphill, for instance, incredibly easy on this bike. Sometimes I've run into problems where a shift won't go through, or jumps a little bit, or there's just a bit of a problem on mechanical, whereas with electronic, my experience has been absolutely amazing every shift goes through no matter how much or how little tension you're putting through the pedals. And finally for shifting performance, so this isn't technically a performance bit, but I think it works incredibly well for a TT bike. Being able to have shifters on the aero bars and on the base bars is absolutely amazing and makes it much, much, much more day-to-day -day rideable. I really don't think I'd be able to ride this bike through London without having shifters on the base bar, and to do that, you really need electronic shifters. The number of times I've had to downshift while braking in London, it, it happens every minute or two trying to get through traffic, 
and I wouldn't be able to do that on a normal TT bike and I think that makes it much less rideable compared to the electronic group set. So it's a massive bonus for TT bikes, although I don't think that you get as much benefit from it on a road bike, simply because your hands are almost always going to be within reach of the shifters and the brakes. The other main group of benefits comes down to reduce maintenance. And although I haven't had this group set for very long, so maybe I don't have as much experience with this, to the best of my understanding, Typically, it just requires less doing to it. We don't have mechanical cables to worry about replacing. And parts can tend to last a little bit longer, meaning that overall, you're not worrying about re-indexing because it does that automatically. And you're not worried about replacing any cables or any components as frequently as you would with a mechanical group set. Worrying less about maintenance means more time for riding, which is a massive bonus for me, as I'm pretty crap at most maintenance things. But let's talk about the downsides of electronic group sets, and the really big one which you cannot get around, which I really couldn't make this video without, is the cost of the group set both initially and ongoing. For example, I think Shimano 105 is a really good comparison because it's what I've kind of come from previously. And I think it's the most common road cycling group set just because it's exceptionally good. Now, if we compare mechanical Shimano 105, which is 11 speed and rim brake, so kind of two factors which definitely make this price cheaper. If we compare that to Shimano 105 Di2, 12 speed with hydraulic disc brakes. The mechanical rim brake 11 speed group set is now on sale for £350 for an entire group set, which is a bit of a bargain, I'm going to be honest, compared to the DI2 12 speed with hydraulic disc brakes, which is £1,200 at the time of recording. That is a humongous increase in price. That's almost three or four times the price of the mechanical one and obviously it comes with hydraulic and 12 speed but that's not a justification for the increase in price the increase in price in eastern shimano's eyes is an electronic group set and for all of the benefits that it come with it's really hard to get over that price tag and that's obviously shimano's lowest end electronic group set when you go up to ultegra or dura ace or sram red etap which is incredibly expensive these costs add up and up and up and up and up really quickly. And one of the big problems, in my opinion, with this is both the cost of replacement parts and the availability of replacement parts. Trying to get a Shimano 105 mechanical rear derailleur is really easy. You might spend less than 50 pounds on them depending on whether or not they're on sale, and it's really easy to install. Whereas with these ones, the replacement parts can get incredibly expensive. The other downside of electronic group sets is a pretty small one, but worth mentioning, and that's just trying to remember to charge the batteries. Now, I think this group set in particular and some of our SRAM's other group sets are pretty good because they have separate batteries for the front and rear derailleur, which you can switch around because typically your rear derailleur will go out of battery first because you make more shifts with the rear derailleur, but you can also carry a spare. I think this is a really good system compared to Shimano's where it's one battery for both the front and rear derailleur. So if you don't charge that, you are pretty screwed if it runs out of battery. It's also a weird thing to kind of think about charging up your bike. And it's something that I've had to get used to while using this one, but it's been really easy so far. It's definitely something to keep in mind though, if you're someone who's not necessarily organized or good at getting ready before rides to make sure that your batteries are charged on your bike. It might be one more thing and one more thing preventing you from going out for a ride. But let's wrap up this video by having a think whether or not electronic group sets really are worth it. Now, if money is no object, then of course they're worth it. They are, in my opinion, strictly better than their mechanical counterpart. But unfortunately for most of us, money is a big problem, especially when it comes to how expensive these group sets are. And so considering the price, which is pretty much the one, if not only downside for these electronic group sets, I think it depends. Unfortunately, I know it's a bit of a crap answer. I think it depends whether or not these are worth it. Firstly, I think you have to make a decision whether or not the benefits are worth it over mechanical shifting. You may not have a problem with mechanical shifting or not see the benefits as that massive. And if that's not the case, then 
no worries, stick to mechanical. I think it works really well when looked after. I think the only case where I would really recommend or suggest electronic shifting is the case right behind me and it's why I kind of held out trying to get a bike with electronic shifting and that's on a TT bike because the benefit of being able to have two sets of shifters, one's in aero and one's on the base bar, is so massive. It's such a humongous benefit both for performance because you can stay in the aero bars for significantly longer and for day-to-day -day rideability, especially if you live in a city being able to downshift and brake at the same time is the only reason why I can ride this bike in central London. When it comes to road bikes, I think it's really personal preference. It's not something that I'm reaching for very soon simply because of that price tag, but I'm sure one day when it becomes significantly cheaper than it is now, I might very well consider it. But that's it for this video. Please let me know what your experiences have been like using electronic shifting. If you agree or disagree with my conclusions, let me know down in the comments. I'm really interested to hear it because I'm obviously still pretty new to using electronic gears. And so if anyone's got more experience than me and some other opinions, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with a friend as that really helps out the channel. Hit subscribe to see a full review of my felt IA. And until that one, I'll see you in the next video.